بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين استفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهلينهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم تعالى درجة سؤال والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا Those who strive in our way, we guide them to our path. Ayah of the Quran. Those people who strive in our way, لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلُنَا Verily, we will surely, surely guide them on our path. On our paths, actually. It's plural. So the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Sirat al-Mustaqim. It's one of the paths. It's the central, it's the, it's the main path that all of us take. So we should understand not only the path, but what are the things that allow you to progress on the path, what are the things that hinder you from the path, and what are the things that are signposts on the path. So these are the four things that you have to understand. First of all, what's the path? The second thing is, what are the things that hinder you from the path? The third thing is, what are the things that allow you to progress on the path? And the fourth thing is, what are the signposts of the path? What are the mile markers? Like you go on a trip and you see you're going to Detroit. So it says Detroit 400, whatever, 200 miles. And then it says 150 miles. And then it says 50 miles. And then it says 20 miles. And then you see a lot of signs that say Detroit, Detroit soon, it's coming. Those are all signposts. They tell you that you're progressing on the path and you know you're getting closer to the goal. When you see those mile markers go down, you know you're getting closer to the goal. So these are four essential things. And we'll talk about them independently at different times. But what I want to talk about right now are the signposts of the path. So what are the things that allow you to recognize that you're progressing on the path? What are the different markers that you see as you go along this path? And this is where people find the confusion. Because if you're just sitting in a car, if I say to you, we're all going to go to Detroit, and everybody gets in a car, and we don't go anywhere, then you're going to give up. You're going to say, this trip is worthless. We're not doing anything. We're not going anywhere. So same thing in your deen. If you sit in the, if you just sit at the same place all the time and you don't progress and you don't experience the deen, you don't taste the deen, then of course you're going to get bored with it, you're going to get sick of it, you're, going to, you're not going to be as excited about it. So there, you have to progress and there are signs of progression. The first thing is that you have to progress. So stagnation is not, stagnation is very detrimental. The second thing is that you have to know the signs of progressing. So one person thinks that all of a sudden he's, getting righteous, and then all these different things are occurring, they may have nothing to do with the, 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 the dean. They may just be some external things, and he may think he's progressing. So you have to know the signposts of progression, because that's important. So the two key things, and the main way that you know that you're progressing, is that the sunnah and the sharia begin to come into your life. That's the fundamental way. It's not that you feel like you're floating in the sky, or you feel this extreme peace in your heart all the time, or, you know, now, every time you, you drive, you get more miles out of the gallon in your car or something like that. It's, it's not these things. It's the fact that the sunnah and the sharia come into your life. A love for the Prophet, which results in following the sunnah, and a love for Allah, which results in following the sharia. When you love the Prophet, you begin to emulate him. Just look at the world and how they emulate their sports stars. They, begin, they fall in love with one sports idol or one singer or one actor and then every, but once they show that actor wearing X, Y, or Z clothing or using X, Y, or Z perfume or cologne or having their hair in X, Y, or Z style, the whole world begins to emulate them. Why? Because they have a love, most people have a love for dunya in their world, in their, in their heart. And so these are the, these are the sha'ir. These are, those people are the idols of the dunya. And people see them and they begin to emulate them because that's the love that exists in their heart. But the person who has submitted their heart and soul to this deen they fall in love with the Prophet them. And one of the truest signs of loving the Prophet them is to emulate the Prophet them. So that's the first and foremost sign. That's the first and foremost goal. But in your life, as you begin to progress, as you begin to improve, you'll see the sunan of the Prophet coming into your life. It'll be in your character, in that per- perhaps maybe it, there was a time when you would t- cheat, but now you won't cheat anymore. Or perhaps there was a time when you wouldn't, where you would pull 
around, and now you don't fool around anymore. Or perhaps there was a time when you didn't have the tawfiq to come to the masjid, but now you come to the masjid regularly. Or perhaps there's a time when you spent more time reading the Qur'an, or more time reading the newspaper, or less time reading the Qur'an, and now the Qur'an has increased in your life. So all these are signs. These are all sunan of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to live his, his life, it begins to take over your own life. So the way he walked, the way he talked, the way he dealt with people, the kindness in his heart, the way he dealt with his family, the love that he had for the Ummah, all these characteristics begin to overtake you. So that's the first foremost. That you fall in love with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and subsequently you begin to emulate him because of it. The second is that you fall in love with Allah. When you fall in love with Allah, then the sharia becomes easy for you to follow. One thing is to, fo- to follow the sharia because you fear Allah. That has its own place. But it's a whole different level to follow the sharia because you fall in love with Allah. If you fall in love with Allah, then you, anytime you fall in love with something, or some concept, or some idea, the difficulties of life become easy. For example, if somebody has fallen in love with the idea that he's going to become a physician, he's determined this, he's decided it, he's fallen in love with it, he thinks about it at night, he thinks about it when he wakes up, he talks about it with all his friends, his family talks to him about it all the time, that person will undergo extreme hardships and will not even feel that, they are, that he's, under, he's undertaken any hardship at all. For example, that person will... That's what you need to do. That person will travel, if he has to, to the Caribbean live under third world conditions, study under the most difficult of circumstances, and will not feel like anything. In fact, will come back and brag to people that I went here and I'm studying this and I'm doing this and I'm going to come back shortly and I'm going to be doing that. All these things, why? Why does he undergo so much hardship? Because he's fallen in love with the idea of becoming a physician. It's not that he fears poverty. He knows that he'll make money doing something else. But he has this love in his heart for doing this. Similarly, the same thing when you fall in love with Allah. The Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes very, very easy to follow when you have a love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a whole different level. You don't do it anymore because you're afraid, if I don't do this, this will happen to me. You do it because you say, I have this deep relationship with Allah, and I don't want to lose that relationship, and I know that Allah told me to do A, B, and C, and I'd love to do A, B, and C. So these are the two things that, should, that we should keep in mind. That when you progress along the path, the two ways that you know that you're improving is that the Sharia and the Sunnah come into your life. So this includes things like coming to the masjid, having the tawfiq to spend time with good people. All the different things that you see in the lives of the Sahaba and the lives of the Prophet them, all these things then enter your, should enter your life as well. That's the sign of progression. So that's the thing that we should all keep in mind. Because you get confused, like, well, what's, what does it mean to really progress in Islam? And the way, the real means of progression is these two things. When these two things enter your life, then you begin to improve. And then over time, you'll see that as you're improving, more and more of these things will enter your life. So maybe you only came to the prayer, to the masjid for one prayer. You begin to come for two. Maybe you came for none. You begin to come for one. Maybe you never woke up at the hajjid. Now you have the tawfiq once in a while to wake up. Maybe, you know, you didn't spend much time reading the Quran. Now you spend a few, you know, a few minutes or half an hour or an hour every day reading the Quran. Whatever. Everybody progresses at their own rate. But the point is that you have to continually progress. Don't be stagnant. Continually progress in your being. So, that's a discussion of the signposts of, of progress. That when you begin to approach Allah, these are the things that will enter your life. If you're doing something and these things don't enter your life, then you're not progressing. And if you're doing something and these things begin to enter your life, then know that you're progressing on the path. Wa akhirat da'wana alhamdulillahi